Hi, welcome to TLC's Creative Art Corner. I'm Miss Susan and I hope you had a blessed week. Today we are going to paint with dried beans. Now this is similar to painting with the dyed rice and pastas that we did previously. However, we're not going to dye the beans, although it is possible. Instead, we're going to use the beautiful natural colors of the dried beans. Now you probably already have a variety of dried beans in the house, but if you do go to buy them for this project, you can cook the leftovers and have them for lunch or dinner. So there's no waste involved here. Now here are some examples of what is possible, but you can really do anything. This first one here is a Mandela. Okay, and I did it in a CD cover. Basically a Mandela is a circular design and then it works its way out from there and you can do different types of designs. This one I did in a CD cover, but I, the beans were too heavy or too fat rather for me to be able to close the cover on it. So, but they are glued down, so it's all well and good. Okay, now this one is done within the whole case. So, you know, you can open it up, you know, and then close it down. But you had, I had to remove this inner, inner piece in there. But this would work for the thinner, smaller beans. Okay, great. This one was influenced by Australian Aboriginal art. Red, orange, browns, blacks, whites are popular colors that they used. And then they, it's just a free-flowing design, not, not really anything. You know, Aboriginal art is very specific, but this is just an influence, so that's all right. Now, and then I also, we also have a, some flowers. You could do this any way. Any kind of flowers are possible any way you want to do it. And you don't even have to put beans in all the spaces. You can use the background color as part of your color. And finally, the last one we have is an interpretation of Van Gogh's Starry Night. As you can see, I just used some white beans to go around here, some yellow, I guess it's doll, for the sun or stars, and then various greens and black and brown for trees and the landscape. So it was really fun. All right, so these are the kind of things that are possible, but anything is. So what materials will we use today? Well, first off, we're going to protect our table, and we're also going to put an apron on. It is optional for this project. And we're also going to need a variety of dried beans. So here's some dolls, some green peas, okay, and uh, kidney beans. Okay, three is probably fine, you know, but don't feel you have to go to the store and get every bean available on the shelf. I mean, I, I have plenty here. Uh, but use what you have because that's the best. You're also going to need white glue, and there's a variety of white glues that you can get. And after that, you're going to need a sturdy base, let me put this out of the way, a sturdy base to put the beans on because they're a little bit heavy. So you can use a foam cord, okay, you could use a poster board, where's my poster board? Here's poster board, it's nice and heavy. You could also use the bag, we've talked about using bags because it already has the hanger on it. You know, you could sort of glue the bag together and it'll be fine. And then your beans would cover whatever design is on the bag. Okay, and you could also use the DVD covers, and I showed you that earlier, but sometimes you'll need to remove the inner piece, okay, so that you can close the top on it if you want to do that. You're going to need an old brush, old paint brush. I have a big one here, but a smaller one would be better, and a flat one, but this is a round one. I couldn't find my brushes today as usual. Okay, tweezers are very helpful when you get the, um, another color mixed in, you can tweezer it out. Pencil to draw and possibly popsicle sticks to help you um, spread the glue around. Okay, and then I'm using a tuna can to put my uh, glue in, and so I can just paint from that because it's sometimes difficult to continue to work with the, this um, the glue container itself, okay? And then stencils, let me put this out of the way. Stencils, I went online Okay, and I just put down, um, I wanted to do an owl, okay, so a reference picture. So I did a search for, for an owl. I said owl stencil or stencil owl or whatever animal you want to do or whatever it is you want to do. It's really great. So this is what I found. I found this one page that just had a lot of owl, different owls on them. And I decided I really liked this one here and there was another, and this one here. I thought they were really simple. So I uh, cropped those and made, blew them up. So I have one here and I decided what colors I'm going to use where. So that's the one I'm going to use. And then I did the same thing for Stencil Mandela and I got a page that had a whole bunch of them and I decided which one I liked the best um, that would work well here. And I chose this one here. So I cropped it, and here it is. And then when I was doing it, I put the plastic CD cover right over it, 
and drew, the, drew where my cover was, and then I was able to see where to put my design. So that was really a nice thing to do. All right, so I have my stencils, okay. And uh, I looked up a puppy as well. I did a puppy face. Okay, so lots of things you can look up online, you know. Or if not, you just do your, you know, freehand, because why not? We're the artist, okay? Now another option is, let me show you how to um, transfer your stencil onto your surface. Now one way is to cut, cut it out. You can cut it out, lay it down, and trace it, like a stencil that we did last week with um, Henry Matisse. The other is what I did here. I'll show you. You can take a pencil. Let me move this out of the way. And where's my pencil? And scribble on the back where the design is, like this. Okay. All right. You know, over and over. You know, you just have to see where the design is. Lift it up. Okay. And then I'm going to put it on my base. Okay. And you might want to tape it down, but I, I it's okay. I, so I'm going to hold it down, and then I'm going to draw around. Okay. When you use the foam cord uh, board and you do this, you're going to leave a little, a little indentation, and that's perfectly fine. Okay. Now I'm not going to do these little lines here because I'm, I'm not doing a design there. And then I decided I'm going to have him standing on a branch, so I'm going to put a branch here. Okay. So you can see. It's pretty well done. Well, here it didn't come out, so I'm just going to freelance it in. And if you want to go over it again, that's fine too. This is not too round. So here's my design, and now I'm ready to start. So once you have your surface all sketched out, you decide what colors you want to use. So I decided which, uh, which beans I'm going to use on my owl. Okay, now I showed you how to put the stencil onto your your surface, but I decided I wanted to do mine on a form cord board because I want to use the color in the background as part of the design. So this is where we're going to start. So the other one I just showed you was so that you could see how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to start here with the eyes because it's easier to start like in the middle and work your way out. So I'm going to start with the little white of the eye here. And you want to put the glue on fairly, fairly thick so that it sticks and gets in there because otherwise it sometimes comes out. Okay, and then I'm going to sprinkle the beans on. Pressing it down a little bit, tap them in. So you don't need gloves for this, which is nice. Okay. And then I'm going to sort of try to get them into a little circle there. Yeah, great.
So that's the process. You just keep putting down layers of glue and then, then your beans, color by color. Now here, when I did the, here was my original, my stencil that I started with. So I wanted to see how, you know, how close they are in comparison. Now when I laid down the, um, the wings, the red beans for the wings, I put them, tried to put them sort of in an order or in a line so that they would follow the direction of wings on a bird. The same thing with the chest feathers. I took white beans and I just did them up and down one at a time. And the beans sort of have, have a curve to them, so I tried to follow the curve of the bean as well. And then I have the brown chickpeas here, or black chickpeas I think they're called, for the branch of the tree. And I put black, um, two for each uh, talon or hook or what do you call it, claws. Okay, and then just regular green, um, what's this, mung beans here for the, the face. And then the nose and the, the top of the head here. I put um, doll and then black beans. And then there's some white doll here around for the eyes. I wish it were white, 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 but okay, that's fine. And then I use the background as the... As a, as a color itself, you know, as part of the design rather than beans. But if you wanted to, you could t take and do beans all the way around here. But I wanted to use the natural color of the beans. So, and then now you're going to need to let it dry thoroughly overnight. Now, the white glue, see in places here, I still see the white glue, but it takes about 24 hours for it to completely dry because we did put it on quite thick, okay? So, that's the project. So I hope you enjoyed this project. Now be sure to send in your masterpieces to me or to the administrator at the addresses on the screen, and we'll share them on our TLC's website. Also send me your comments and suggestions. I always like to hear what you have to say. So have a blessed week and see you next time. Meanwhile, stay safe, stay healthy, and until then, bye-bye.